Hi, my name is Tomasz Poszetek and in this video I would like to show you the last piece I found the most important when speaking about task reassignment. So basically before, I mean, in the video I showed you, like you can find the link in the description to how you can reassign any task to any user using Cloudflows. Um, I somehow missed the point that sometimes when I was reassigning a task to a user who is just a regular uh, environment, environment maker, uh, that that user doesn't see a task that's reassigned to them. And I somehow did not investigate that any further. But recently I was asked about that issue by a community member and I decided to just give it another shot. And so I realized that the fact that that environment maker is not seeing the reassigned task is absolutely related due to permissions. And so let me showcase you what I mean and how you can actually fix it. So this is my cloud for that I'm using and that you possibly uh, are familiar with from my previous videos that I'm using to assign lots of tasks. Now this uh, action here is going to assign a task to, to me and John Researcher. I'll just change its title to uh, maybe like just another test and I'll trigger it so that you'll realize what do I mean, okay? So right now it's running. So if I go now to John Researcher's approvals here, Uh, in just a second, he should be assigned this task. Okay, so let me just refresh it. Right, so there is this uh, just another test. And if John now reassigns this task to Stefan, which makes this task to disappear from his list and appear on the list of approvals that Stefan has, right? This is all fine. Why? Well, because in here we are following uh, those, those principles and uh, and the uh, well API steps that the built-in approvals in Power Automate is following. However, however, if I do another test, so if I now added this cloud flow and I will try to manually reassign a task using the cloud flow I have showcased you in the in the previous video and once again you can find a link in the description below so that the power automator is called the reassign a task right so let me just open the flow and run it. So I need to get the approval ID, which is here. And I now want to reassign a task from John to Stefan. So before I trigger it, let me just show you that right now, John, John has this new task, Stefan. doesn't, right? So now once I trigger it, you'll notice that John doesn't have this task anymore because it was like his task, his um, the, the record that was assigned to him in a prior request table was marked as inactive. However, Stefan, doesn't see the task that was reassigned to him. Now, why? <laughs> Let me show it. So the next step I want to do is to navigate actually to data and to tables. The point is that you need to grant access for the new assignee to the approval record. So it is not only mandatory to simply create a new approval request record, which 
uh, the new assignee is the owner of, but you have to as well share the header record that is stored in approval table with that new assignee. Um, so if I now open the approval table, then uh, switch to all data, or maybe um, I'll just un I'll just show some more more tables, uh, more and more columns. Um, so I'll just do the approval. Um, and create it on is there. And just to be sure the owner. And then let's go for the additional rows. I'll sort now this descending so that the newer are going to be on the top. So these are those two uh, requests that I have just created in, in a moment. And so if I open details of this record and, 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 I check access for Stefan. You'll notice that this record is shared for a read with that user. It means that if I go to share and manage access, I will find all the assignees that took part in this approval process ever. So those who were assigned in the first place and Stefan because he was assigned through the reassignment. All right, so here he has these read permissions on the approval header record. Now, if I do the same thing for the second row, so for the one that I have created that was reassigned using my own Cloudflow, you'll notice that in here, Stefan has actually no access, right? So what I have to do is to simply share this record with him because he, as at this moment, he doesn't have an access, right? So what I have to do is to uh, say that Stefan, sorry, <laughs> Stefan, that he must be granted the read access. Now, once I do that and switch back to Stefan, you'll notice that this new approval that was just created magically appears in his list, right? So this is that simple. Um, and what you need to be aware of is how to do that, right? So to fix it in the workflow, which is reassigning a task, you need to add uh, a new action that is going to perform an unbound action or an unbound step. So look for Dataverse and in Microsoft Dataverse, Look for the action that is called to perform the unbound action. And now in the unbound action, you need to find the action that is called the grant access. Okay. And here, the target is going to be um, this table that we already have in here. So the uh, flow approvals. So I'll just copy it. And then in principal access, you need to, well, copy paste uh, a piece of a JSON that looks like this. And then in the system user, you need to get um, data. You need to get the ID of the person who is the new owner of the new record. Um, and so this is going to be uh, this is going to be this. So we need to get that value. Right? So this is going to be this uh, information, the first um, system user ID that I'm getting from this action. So here this, this action uh, is performing the OData query to get all the rows that matches that new assignee's email. Obviously, this is going to be a table. So this action always returns a table, even though there is just one record matching. 
And so in here, I just need to get the first record from this returned table, right? So now once I save it, oops, there is some kind of an error. Oh, uh, another thing is that you need to be aware that the at symbol, uh, if you, if you put it in any Cloudflow action, it has to be escaped by the second at symbol. All right. So that's just a thing that you have to be aware of. No, it's just not enough. Am I missing again something? No, 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 no. Now it's okay. <laughs> now it's okay. Everything works. All right. Um, so with that, I am now able to simply create another test. So let's call it now just another test number three. So I'll again save and test and run it. Okay, so I already see that the flow generated this new approval. So just to show you that as of now, Stefan does not have this record. John is assigned the record, I mean, is assigned this task. So if I now trigger again my reassign a task flow, and I reassign it from this currently assigned John to new assignee, who is going to be Stefan. Yep, the flow runs successfully. So if I go back now to, um, to the data, to the data, and there is this new record just generated and I check its permissions, like with whom it is shared, you will notice that indeed Stefan is now one of the, uh, one of the users with whom this header record is shared. Therefore, he is now going to simply be able to see that shared task. And well, he is simply able to uh, approve it or, or reject it. It's well, up to him. Now, the last piece uh, that we have here in uh, in Cloudflows is that um, I, I wouldn't call it an issue, but it's that challenge with notifications being sent to the new assignees if we have that scenario when a task is being reassigned. Um, now, if the reassignment is made through the API, uh, to the, to the uh, UI, so to the user interface, through Cloudflow, I mean through the Power Automate portal or to the Microsoft Teams uh, approvals application, then this notification, this email is being sent ad hoc. However, if the reassignment is done through the custom actions like, uh, like mine, like as I showed you through the Cloudflow that's reassigning a task, then those notifications are not being sent ad hoc. I have noticed that, as you can see in here, that after some time, these tasks are being created, these those notifications are being sent. So as you saw for a second, there was an actionable message showing me uh, the contents of that just another test number three which I was able to approve or reject. However, because I approved it through the user interface, therefore uh, the card was refreshed and closed with a notification that, uh, well, actually I took my part in this approval. Although uh, I wouldn't say this is anyhow deterministic, like how fast this notification after this not, not uh, out of box reassignment procedure will arrive, but as far as I, as far as I was testing this functionality, these notifications will, will sooner or later arrive if that header record is assigned, uh, is shared with the new assignee. All right. So without having said that's everything I wanted to share with you around, uh, reassignment. So at a moment that you're reassigning a task to a user who is just a regular environment maker, be sure that you are sharing that header record with them. But even though, even if, if they are system customizer or even, uh, even, even the, the admin in that environment, it is, um, the right thing to, to share that header record with them because 
that in my opinion is or may be the trigger for that process that sends notifications to actually trigger this, this delivery of notification. So anyhow, just keep that in mind that anytime you're reassigning a task, you need to share the approval header record stored in approvals table with the new person with the new assignment. All right. So thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, just leave me a comment, leave the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Bye bye.